You'd fail your classes for handing in incomplete work, but these video game companies seem to get away with it every other week. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unfinished games that came out anyway. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays. Game smarter. For this list, we'll be looking at games that were prematurely released before developers could probably complete the product, therefore resulting in a lack of content or broken gameplay. Please note that while many games today require post-release patches to fix some bugs, they were still technically complete in the eyes of the developers, therefore titles like Assassin's Creed Unity are not eligible. Number 10, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. Use the weapon from this container to attack the droids. Now hold on to your Rancor, Star Wars fans, and hear us out. Yes, this follow-up to the original KOTOR is without question a great game, and the first install was indeed a hard act to follow. All that being said, KOTOR 2 definitely feels like a step down from its predecessor. With only a year of production time and entirely new dev team, this game feels unpolished in certain areas, with reused gameplay mechanics from the original and a barely modified graphics engine. There is no doubt that this game is a classic, but we feel that maybe this one was shoved out of the door to capitalize on the first entry's popularity, which is a shame, because the force could have been stronger with this one. Number 9, Battlecruiser 3000 AD. First announced in 1992, then jumping around studios, suffering budget cuts and legal battles, it's no wonder this one failed to live up to its potential. The designer of the game, Derek Smart, had a vision to deliver a truly authentic space vehicular combat game, complete with deep gameplay and a beefy campaign mode. These dreams were quickly shattered due to the aforementioned financial woes the project experienced, not allowing the team to create the game they envisioned. There was still a great deal of hype surrounding the title just based on its premise, something which corporate business folks saw they could exploit and decided to release the game way ahead of schedule. Number 8, Sonic the Hedgehog. Thank you, Tails. You saved me. The transition from 2D to 3D wasn't favourable to many video game franchises, one of them being Sega's blue mascot Sonic the Hedgehog, whose leap to the third dimension ironically slowed him down even faster than he could ever run. After a few clunkers in a row, the 2006 reboot was showing a lot of promise as a strong return to form for the character. Oh, how far from the truth that was. Sonic 06 was absolutely littered with game-breaking bugs, cumbersome controls, and one too many lengthy loading screens. It was so bad that some people feel it completely shattered all hope for there ever being another good Sonic game. Gotta go fast, right back to the drawing board. Number 7, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Fire. In the fifth outing of the mainline Metal Gear series, the pressure was on for Hideo Kojima to deliver the best game he possibly could for the fans. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only pressure he felt, as the game's publisher Konami kept butting heads with Hideo, resulting in unnecessary complications that ultimately hindered the quality of the final product. The MGS5 we still got was no doubt phenomenal, but with a large portion of the final act being forcefully cut from the game, it noticeably feels like a piece of the puzzle isn't present. This sucks because the rest of the game was so good, leaving us saddened to know that we couldn't see what else was planned. Number 6, Ultima 9, Ascension. You are a bounty hunter sworn to return an alleged murderer. 
The Ultima series is no stranger to ticking off its fan base with clearly rushed products like Ultima 8. However, it's with Ultima 9 where controversy really kicked into high gear. From the moment it hit shelves, fans felt it was nowhere near as refined as prior installments had been. One of the most common criticisms of the game was how insultingly detached the storyline felt, as it utterly failed to connect or do justice to the prior games in the series. Having a bombardment of bugs to drag down the experience even further didn't help matters either. Not so ultimate now, are you, Ultima? <laughs> Number 5, Ride to Hell Retribution From the makers of Pimp My Ride the Game, originally announced in 2008, cancelled in 2009, then resurfaced in 2013 as three separate titles, you can start to imagine how this is a train wreck waiting to happen. No version of the game scoring higher than an abysmal 19% on Metacritic, Ride to Hell lives up to its name as one of the most unpleasant gaming experiences in recent years. Every aspect of the design feels duct taped, now scotch taped together, with horrendous graphics, terrible gameplay and highly offensive writing. There is no retribution coming for this unbearable excuse for interactive entertainment. It did mention something about needing a long nap. Now, let me show you what a mechanic can really do. Number 4, E.T. The Extraterrestrial. E.T. Based on the blockbuster film of the same name, E.T. is often regarded as the worst video game of all time. While it's certainly terrible, we can't help but feel bad for it considering its troubled production history. Considering the popularity of the film and the rise of the Atari home game system, an opportunity was seen by those in the business to capitalize on the brand and make a quick buck. E.T. was then rushed into production, made by one guy in a total of five and a half weeks. The fact that he made anything at all under this time constraint is impressive, but we can't ignore this clearly incomplete mess. Number 3 Superman At the start of its production, Superman 64 certainly had promise. Developer Titus Software wanted to create the first 3D game where you can actually feel like a superhero, and with two years to work on it, this could have shaped up to be something special. In some other dimension, Superman 64 may well be the best game ever, but in ours it suffered big time interference from Warner Bros and DC Comics, who kept placing restrictions and demands on Titus, hindering the development in the process. Whether the idea was too ambiguous, or there were too many cooks in the kitchen, one thing is for certain in the eyes of the players, this game didn't fly. Number 2 Infestation – Survivor Stories aka The War Z Zombie games have been done to death, no pun intended, over the past few decades, so this game had a lot to prove to stand out. Well, it did garner attention, just not the kind anyone would have hoped for. As if the gameplay and design weren't already average enough, the real nail in the coffin were the unforgivable amount of microtransactions clearly shoehorned into the product to squeeze cash from consumers' wallets. Key features and weapons that were advertised were not in the actual game unless you paid for them. This isn't even mentioning charging players to respawn after they died, otherwise they had to wait half an hour to play again. Not cool, guys. Number 1 Big Rigs – Over the Road Racing Some may place it in the so bad it's awesome category, but that doesn't change the fact that this one is obviously far from being complete. Literally any sense of this being a competent, functioning game are thrown out the window. Collision detection is non-existent, with the player being able to drive anywhere, even directly through obstacles. The physics and handling are completely ludicrous, with vehicles about to reach speeds well beyond reality, and the graphics… Eh, what graphics? Even more baffling, it's meant to be a racing game, but your opponents don't even cross the finish line after completing laps, destroying any challenge. Big Rigs is one big disaster. Ooh. 